Hey YouTube, this is an old project that I'm just digging around to doing the video for. I've been using the finished product for a while now, although really it's not finished because I do have plans to turn it into a fully fledged CNC table. I was waiting for that to happen before I did the video, but it seems a way off now, so I think it's time we put the video up so you can have a look at it. So I picked up some tables, they're old CNC tables, they have legs and two pieces here, actually it's one table. Four sections of leg, two sections of table, it all bolts together to be one huge CNC table. I don't need a huge CNC table like this. If I get one that's half the size, that'll do me. What I'm thinking at the moment is, I'm going to take this table and make two tables out of it. One's going to be a CNC table for cutting up sheets up to 8x4 in feet, 2.4 metres by 1.2 metres. And that'll be probably as big as I'll ever want to cut, I hope. I'd be ashamed to not have the rest of the table, but I think that'll be plenty for me. The table by itself will take up a huge bit of real estate. But if I cut it into two tables, make two tables out of it, I'll have one CNC table, and I'm going to make the other one into a welding bench. I was going to take a day off work, a leave day of course, and take a drive down the middle of New South Wales because I was selling some on auction and that was really cheap. And I said to the boss, thinking about taking a day off to go down and pick up a table and he said, oh don't do that, I've got one here. So he did me a really good deal on this table. I'm really pleased with it. He got rid of some junk that has been sitting around for a long time, so I think everyone's happy with it. There's two projects I've got coming up now. A nice welding bench, which I've wanted forever. I'm sure I can make a really nice welding bench out of one of those tables. I'm thinking of making it adjustable height and all. The other one's going to be a CNC table for plasma. I'll set up my plasma unit and I'll be able to cut the sheets on it, which will be another big bonus. Well, this is the start of the CNC build. I've got the... Just going to make the frame to hold the sacrificial cross pieces in because I don't know what else to call them. I don't even have part numbers at the moment. I drew up a plan but it's in the extremely early stages. I normally don't start building until I have the plan all mapped out. But nevertheless, we're going to start and we've got two pieces of 2380 with a 45 degree mitre on each end. Now I'd just like to note here that when I have multiple pieces to cut, wherever possible, I like to clamp them together and cut them together. That way they're exactly the same length. The only thing that can go wrong is if the blade wanders sideways as it goes through, which doesn't happen very much if you're using a good blade. That'll, that'll be right within a couple of hours. Some power, some safety gear. Now, I'm going to clamp this other end together before I undo it. I need my 45 degree line to see what I'm doing. It's not. Just make it disappear. Perfect, exactly. Normally I don't make things that exact, but I do want a nice, neat fit in here. She's 2380 long, and the actual sheets are 2400, so we're 20 mils short anyway. I haven't quite decided how to manage that, but one way or another, I've got to get a little bit extra. We'll see. So I think I'll just leave them clamped together now while I mark out the rest of the fittings. I'll get these two clamped back together too and I'll cut the end pieces. That's why I've got the bevel set. 1.516 metres outside to outside. That's why you measure twice and cut once. Can you make the line disappear and that'll be good. Something rubble is burning, it's the rubber feet. That's all the bits I need to do the job. I'm going to do something about protecting that rubber. I need to measure some cuts in this SHS, it's 
so that I can put the sacrificial uh, shelves in. And it is 140 from the end and then every 100 thereafter. Since this is 30 by 30, we should be 110 from this end. And that's showing about half a millimeter out of my initial measurement. That one's spot on. 140 is near enough. Five and a half inches, a tenth hour. So my second line up here is correct. Now, if everything's right, we should have 110 there, which we have. Now that I've got all the pieces cut from the bottom of the frame, I've just got to prep them up for welding, grind off the bears and get rid of some of the galvanising off the ends just so the weld goes in better. I'm not taking the galvanise off these. My plan is to stick weld them with a probably two and a half mil stick because that's the smallest I've got at the moment. It's about 332s and 60 amps. Get the arc started and then go like hell before I burn through it because this is only about 2 mil on the wall which is just over a sixteenth of an Rat pile to the rescue once again. I keep some ridiculously small off cuts in the scrap pile and they often come in handy for packing and such is the case now. I'm going to have to do a little bit of trimming here and there just to get this fitted up nicely so I'll just use a grinder to knock some edges off. And it's got a good fit on it now. And now that that's a good fit up and it's clamped down nice and level, I can just go ahead and weld this. Let's see if we can tack this up. 60 amps on the dial. Now the key thing here is I want to get the arc started and then go like hell before I burn through the wall. Do some tack and I just slowed down a bit much at the end, started to blow a hole. That was good. Once that hole starts to go, she's going to go. Just to blow a bit of a hole in that, because there's a gap there, and I just didn't want to go quick enough, I think. See if I can come back at it the other way. Yeah, I filled it a bit. Probably about as good as I'll get it. And it's one for this round. Yeah, it's a beautiful one, that one. From there on it was just a matter of turning the frame around and around and around so that I could get a good angle in to weld all of the corners. And I wanted to get all sides of the corners and I had to move really quickly so I needed a good angle in order to do that. With the outside of the frame all welded up, the next step was to go along with the grinder and grind down the bottom of the wells, or the wells on the bottom of the frame, so that it would sit down on the lower frame, table, top, whatever you want to call it. Then I had to have a think about how I was going to manage it. In the finish, I decided that I needed to put some spaces under this frame in order to raise it up a little bit further. I had thought I'd get away without it, but once I had it together and in place and reflected on it a little bit, I realised that it wasn't going to work without the spaces. Well, as you might have guessed, this isn't a project that I drew up plans for before I started. I sort of ad-libbed this one. I did draw some plans up as I went along. However, it's mainly been a build a bit and see how it works out and then build a bit more sort of project. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. We'll continue the build in the next episode. And in the meantime, if you'd like to see more of my projects, you can go to my YouTube channel or browse to my website. Don't forget to click the like button. Subscribe if you'd like to see more of my videos. Until next time.